Hi and welcome to tutorial number six. I hope you're all having a great day today. So here we have Ella's voice that we sampled and put in the, uh, the sampler and played out on the track. What I'm going to do now is uh, start colouring these tracks, colour coding them because otherwise it just starts getting a bit confusing. I imported a little voice that I sampled in the car of Ella saying pourquoi. It's not that good quality but yeah, it should be okay with the music. But it gives us a nice little vocal break. Pourquoi, which means why in French. So we might call the song Pourquoi, which means why. I mean, why not? Which is pretty cool. Huh? Why? Pourquoi? Okay, let's get on and color code these tracks. So this is a bass, so we're going to do this one blue. And the same with this one, blue as well. I mean, you can choose your own colors. Uh, I use, these are the colors I always use. Then the vocals are going to be a sort of pinky color, rose pink. There you go. And then this is a percussion here. So we're going to have that brown and then the vocal part pink, like this. So now we've got that coloured. It's looking good. Uh, I've kept this percussion part here kind of a mustardy orange colour. Because this is the drummer, this percussion drummer thing. So I want to keep that kind of apart color wise this is the drummer here and uh, yeah so now that's looking good we can now move on now we can shorten this region here to leave room for the vocal Okay, that's uh, sounding good. Here, I might actually bring this into the sample at one point and use it, but for now, I'll just leave it there. Uh, now, let's move on and start looking at doing a reverse reverb effect at the beginning here. So, what I want to do is do the same thing here as what we got right at the beginning. So, let's get on and do the reverse reverb effects now. What I like to do is to have it at the same in the same key as this beginning of this vocal part here. So what I need to do is set up a reverb and record the reverb. So let me just prepare this here um, by bringing in a reverb. Uh, let's have a look. Let's use the Chrome verb for, for a change. And what I'm going to do is just separate this first bring this up a bit this first here this first note this I'm going to mute so we don't hear it otherwise it's going to get in the way we can mute it here if you go up here you can see that we've got mute somewhere up there and you can mute it directly in there or on the keyboard Control M. So what I want to do here is, okay, we're going to take this here, just go like this, maybe give it, how long have we got here up the top? It's kind of like a bar. So let's do two bars to be safe. So, so here we're going to put a super long delay. Okay. Now we can't do a bounce in place here. Um, I think I've talked about bounce in place. Anyway, we can't do bounce in place here because if we do, it will only record this part here. It won't record the rest of the reverb. So we need to bounce it completely out of the track by going here. We'll add it to the project. So then we can import it back in. 
So let's call this RevBox and bounce that. Okay, now that's bounced, we go up into the uh, the browser up here. Uh, let's close this. So we go to the browser project and then close all the, the files up so we can see what we're doing. There you go. And there it is. So all we've got to do now is drag and drop that into the arrange window like this. Then we can now put it in position where we want it. For the moment we've got a reverb, which we're going to reverse. So now what we need to do is double click on it, open it up, then we are in file, we go to functions and then reverse. And there you go, it's reversed. Then we come out of there and we're going to move this up next to the voice then have a listen to it. So we're going to shorten this a bit so it's the maximum part of its crescendo. Then we'll put a color to this, keep it pink because it's a vocal part. And then unmute the vocal melody bit. Control M, of course. And then we can mute the, the reverb for now. And now we have this. Yeah, for now we want it at the beginning here. And let's have a listen to the reference track. So as you can see down here, we've got this twice actually um, in the original track. So let's do the same thing. Copy that down like that. Let's go back and have a listen to the the reference track um, to see what kind of effects they've got. They've got like a kick or a, some kind of crash kick thing going on there in effect. So I'm going to do the same thing. So we're going to do a a similar kind of effect uh, by joining these two together and they will then become a single region and a new region. The reason we do this is because these are aliases and with an alias if you work on one alias all the other aliases will change so you have to make a new file up to work on it. So if we go into the file itself and then work on this again it won't affect any other uh, aliases so then all I've got to do is reverse that back again and that becomes the reverb again and then we can place that at the beginning yeah got to bring that down a bit Let's put a fade on that, on both of them. One here and one there. Bring that down a little bit. Uh, it's a bit loud. And here, I'm going to put some kind of uh, kick effect in, like a boom effect. Yeah, so I'm going to put in a, a boom kick and uh, maybe a crash or something later on. Uh, for now, that's sounding okay. Let's see what it's doing. So now, I think we're going to bring in a an effect, like a boom effect, and uh, we're gonna go into Apple Loops to find that. So let's go up to Apple Loops, open up the, the inspector here, and let's go in, into search. And I've already got effects boom that I searched earlier, so now we can listen to all these by scrolling up and down using the arrows on our keyboard.
So here we can adjust the volume to the Apple loops because they are a bit loud. Yeah, the 46 is not bad. And I like... Yeah, I like the 19 as well. So what we've got to do here is drag and drop it into the uh, range window and put it where we want it to sit. So seeing that there's already a bass in there, let's bring up my EQ, which has already got a user default preset that I programmed before and saved as a user default. And I like to have this open uh, directly with a bass, a low end cut. Um, it's called a high pass filter and we just cut this a bit more and uh, we've also got the analyzer down here so you can see there's a lot of bass there so let's uh, cut that a bit more so let's bring down the master volume of the plug in here and we can bring that down to about minus four <laughs> Maybe even minus six, maybe. So here it's still a little bit loud, so I'm going to bring that down a bit. And uh, we're going to start compressing and working on the sound soon. So let's bring back the reverb that I put on here earlier and uh, bring the dry up here a bit. And have a listen to this. So we need to dry up to 100%. So here we can start bringing this up slowly and listen to it. So we've got a reverb in here and now we can put a compressor on. Um, so we can either put it before or after, depending what we want, what kind of color we want, if we want to compress the, the reverb. But um, let's just bring it in here after the reverb for now. So let's open up the menu here and bring in our compressor that already has a user default preset on it that I did before as well. I'd like to have it set this way. It's quicker for me for a fast attack and a fast release and some dis soft distortion on it as well and um, so yeah that's just speeding things up really it usually comes with the platinum here uh, with no distortion on but i like to have some distortion on some instruments on vocals uh, keyboards drums not the kick not the bass sometimes the bass depends on what kind of bass it is not never on the sub for example and uh, it just gives it a nice analog feel to certain certain sounds So here we have the threshold and the ratio. The ratio is how many dBs go out, go in to how many come out. So like this is at 3.1 to 1. So that means that it kind of crushes the sound down and brings up what's not loud and brings down what's too loud uh, to make everything linear, basically. There's a lot of tutorials on the internet if you want to look into this more deeply. Um, just go over to Music Tech Guy, for example. He does a lot of tutorials on all the plugins in Logic and there's other sites as well. I'll just be going over the basic functions. I want to keep it simple and more creative. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on plugins and, and technical stuff. Anyway, let's listen to this now. Okay, seeing that this was a, a, a sample played out on a keyboard, it's quite linear anyway, so it's not like a, a piano sound where the velocity is on levels, so like if there's different uh, levels to the sample, this is just one sample that I did myself. So we can, we can level this out um, to maximum velocity and it shouldn't be a problem because the sound would just be loud, it won't change like a piano or an acoustic sound so all we need to do here is select the whole track and then close this down so it's a lot clearer 
to look at. Now we can join this up with the, uh, the joiner tool and double click on the uh, region to open it up. So now this has become one complete region. We can just go in here, select everything, do like a con command A. Then we can just pull up the velocity here to the maximum, max it out. So we know that everything's at the same level. So let's have a look at this jazzy bit here, see what's going on. So we've got a double note here. Gonna get rid of that. close the window so we've got our effects in the intro now we've sorted the voice out a bit so that's all moving forward the poor choir we're gonna Bring it up with the compressor a bit, see how that sounds. So that's coming along. Next time we're going to start working on the sound a bit, do some subgroups and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like, subscribe and leave some comments. See you soon.